Hello and welcome back for part two of How to Balance Civs. We uh, left off with India, but this time uh, we dropped Harrison because, uh, well, he's a bum. So uh, just gonna be in line today. But um, <laughs> again, we'll continue without him. Um, but yeah, so we finished up the natives and the Asians, and now on to Hausa. Um, something with Hausa. I like the African civs. They're fun to play, uh, a little convoluted, but um, something that I think is really kind of OP is that they get their artillery and all of their natives to shadow tech. Um, and I was thinking maybe like adding some sort of cost to that because, uh, you know, normally when you, you see an enemy age up, you're like, oh, I have like a minute to push or like 40 seconds before their upgrades come in. But, like, if you're pushing and you're in their base, boom, all of their Akana and Cobia, champion, you know, Culverance, Royale with cheese kind of a thing, right? Um, <laughs> so it's just like, and a lot of them are free units, you know, so it just seems a little broken. And maybe reducing the influence trickle, but uh, what do you think about that? Yeah, I mean, both the Africa series get the the shadow techs, and it's kind of like their thing, you know. It's they they their card shadow tech as well. So like the natives that they get in age four, you know, it all shadow techs. Yeah, um, and that's kind of the bonus. But with regards to the artillery, I think that is just a bit too OP. And uh, like you said, I definitely think that I don't know how you how you could do it, but maybe like when they get into age four, for example, the royal with cheese, you know, you would it would cost like four or five hundred. Maybe like a, a tech where it's like four hundred, four five hundred. Um, well, what's the what's the influence? Isn't it? That's what it's called. Mm -hmm. um, so like for, for, for five hundred influence, you could tech both the Culverins and Falconets to you know their their guard techs, you know, something like that. Maybe a bit more than five hundred, but um, yeah. Or even if it were like just a regular, you know, cost, just any cost, like for wood coin, whatever. You know, I just think I think we can agree that something should be added to that because it's kind of broken but um yeah, yeah. particularly with, when it comes to artillery because artillery is, is in the current meta is just like so game changing yeah um, you know, having it having a shadow tech in it is so good honestly right um but other than that i think they're okay i mean they're kind of slow to start yeah. but they they pick up so they they have their yeah their pros and cons. i mean how's it i've got a really strong uh skirm goon game you know so oh yeah um, Fellini, the Fellini Jav, I, I think they've put, like, they've adjusted the Javelin Riders to where they're, I mean, they're great still, don't get me wrong, but I think they're okay. Yeah. And, um, yeah. Yeah, I don't think there's too much more to mention about Hazard, to be honest. Yeah. Alright, cool, cool. A lot more for Ethiopia, though. Um, oh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, so, I think it's like 0.4 something, 0.43 at the Mountain Monastery gathering rate. Maybe just tone it down because it's also influence and coin right and their abens are also coin i saw they did some changes in the pup but i don't i didn't see everything right so you, you might have a mm. little more knowledge on that um shadow warriors so i think there's either like a couple of things either reducing like the speed of attack to a normal amount but increasing the damage or you know, reducing the dam and also their HP is higher than any of the other shock infantry in the game, which is, you know, um, why I think maybe reducing that a bit would be helpful. Um, I guess let's start with those. What do, what do you think about that? Yeah, I mean, I I'm just actually just looking at your changes as a whole. It's, uh, some of them are actually quite closely uh, linked to what the actual pup changes were. Mm -hmm. So, um, Ethiopia. The problem with Ethiopia, they, they're they're noticeably the second best civ in the game uh, at, in, in the current patch. Um, only you know, with only Italy, which are super broken in front of them. And uh, the the problem with them has always been the shuttle the shuttle warriors because mm -hmm. they're essentially like a um, a lancer unit because of their multiplier versus all infantry. So what people have been asking for a long time is that they shouldn't they shouldn't have that multiplier versus musketeers because musketeers it, you know that's supposed to counter them right musketeers yes. are the counter to shuttles right yet in in decent numbers shuttle warriors will like beat musketeers which which makes doesn't make any sense and that's obviously way too strong um, so that's always been the main problem with Ethiopia we, we we've seen in the pub that uh, the multiplier has been changed I think oh. so they uh, yeah so I, I can't remember off the top of my head but. I think they'll uh, do less damage, but they'll lose to musketeers harder now. 
uh, which is what they should do anyway. So, um, you know, but that was the main, that was like, that's like 50% of why they're OP. You've got the other things like uh, the Issa Warriors, uh, which you, you've mentioned there about their speed. Their speed was reduced by 0.5, I think. Oh. Um, yeah, so, uh, and, and, and some of the cards, like the Issa Warrior card in Age 3, right. the, uh, the Cannoneer cards, they've all been, like the amount of units you get from them has been nerfed. So you know, there's there's other than other than the shot of warriors, there's been, there's a few other smaller nerfs. Uh, which so I think Ethiopia um, have been nerfed. If you and and yeah, it's funny. Like the majority of your suggestions there have actually kind in some you know some form or another have actually been have actually happened uh, on the pup. Well, um, there we go. I predicted the future, and uh, <laughs> we can just move on. Um, <laughs> they should sign you up for uh, World Edge. <laughs> Well, that's that's good to hear. Then I won't I won't go any further um, since this was made before the pop. But uh, yeah, I think that would pretty much give them into a more reasonable, you know, because for me something that is OP beats its counters, and if they you know nerf the shuttles, cool beans. Um, yeah, cool. Speaking of which, right? So the last point here on the uh, for Spain, right? I've always had a gripe with the Lancers having no negative multiplier to heavy infantry. Like, for example, right, the Naginata Rider, the Soar, you know, all of your other Lancers, they have negative multipliers to heavy infantry because, in theory, they're supposed to lose to that, right? And, mm -hmm. you know, they have their Huss, so it's not like they don't have another option for, like, your pure, like, tank heavy cav. Um, and I know it's been like an iconic part of Spain's kind of, you know, composition, like Lancer Rod, Lancer Skirm, blah, blah, blah. But I think that that is something that would really, you know, I think it's needed. Um, what do you think about that? Uh, no, I'm going to have to hard disagree um, with regard to the Lancer. The, the thing with the Lancer is it's, I mean, outside, outside of most spanish players you know they did this fact the fast fortress and outside of the cards the mm -hmm. five and four lancer shipments that you get you don't you don't you, uh, you don't often see too much it's not a really niche unit but you don't often see it too much and and it's kind of i don't know it's, it's i want to say it's a niche unit but it's not but it, it's it's funny because they they kind of counter each other like uh lancers versus veteran musketeers will kind of they kind of counter each other mm -hmm. um uh, it's, it, the thing is, yeah, they've got the hazards and they do the cavalry roll. The thing is about lancers is where they're nerfed is that they do they do horribly versus anything other than uh, infantry. So that's that you know that's right. what their their bonus is. So like against goons, against other cavalry, even like even like age two hazards, like right. they'll lose a versus right. So that's kind of the point of them. Yes, I will counter, and I agree because they do noticeably do worse against anything other than infantry. But isn't that also what the rod is for to like chase away goons? And I mean, granted, the goons will still beat the rods, but it kind of like breaks your formation where the goons have to run away from the rods. Um, otherwise, they'll just, you know, die. And then it kind of like breaks where your other, like if you're doing skirm goon, right, it'll kind of break mm -hmm. the formation and your skirms will then be more vulnerable to lancers or have more angles of attack. Um but yeah, I think really it's the, uh, you mostly see them in shipments. Um, but that, that is that is that is a, a point that I I think would I mean, be fair for sure. Yeah, I mean talking about the rods and stuff, and and that's why like through since since Spain have been in the game, you know, right from the start, that's why the the rod rodolero and lancer composition has always been so scary. Yeah. Right? But the, the the but what you need to do is you need to have you need to have a big enough mass yes. to be able to kind of just like a Z move, you know, attack move. But because mm. if you have Lancer and Rods in low amounts, they'll easily be countered by Skirm Goon. But if you have them in large enough mass, they will get beat. Uh, Skirm Goon will get beat by it. So mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's, it's difficult to macro. It's, it's uh, they're, they're an expensive unit. You know, they, they do worse versus they do very badly versus anything other than infantry. Like they, they're terrible at raiding as well. Like they can't raid villages very well. So I think they're a fair unit, yeah. Okay, no, that's valid. That's valid. Um, and a lot of Spain, you know, I think the real skill in Spain is, you know, getting your timings right. And there's a very small window of time where the, the Lancer is effective, but it's effective in that period of time. So I think it's really, that's fair. 
if that's not going to be a change. Um, something that I do think, though, the uh, the two Hacienda shipment and Marvelous Year, right? For the value you get out of two Haciendas, and I mean, granted, if they're destroyed, they're gone, right? Um, but you can say that about some other shipments, like if they're destroyed, they're gone. Um, I think adding a cost to them would be fair because it's more than just, you know, 1,200 resources. It gives you a garrison point, a shipment point. It gives you passive trickles. It can give you villager production. Um, and with Marvelous Year, 365 seconds. I know the year, so 365 days, right, a second. But six minutes of game time. Now, granted, you're not going to get it all at once, and it takes a long time for it to pay off, right, for a thousand resource shipment. Mm. But it's just, it, as Spain, right, you can ship, you age up with the tower, put it in base, right, um, get some musks, whatever, get a fort, and then it just, like, all comes together. Granted, it's greedy, but it can be very, I mean, it's basically giving Spain the ability to play as ports and get 99 villagers, right? Um, yeah. I, yeah. I know you're familiar with the build um, where you can get like a bajillion villagers by like what? Like, I don't know. I, I invented a, a specific type of build for it. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and I, I've seen it before and I'm like, what is this trash? I go to the post game. Dude has 99 <laughs> villagers and then he's just pumping out free soldados. And I'm like, the soldado yeah. thing is fine now. It's in a good spot. It's not OP. But like the whole like villager thing, which is what I think Marvelous Year is for, just makes it like a bit ridiculous. I don't know. What do you think? I agree. I, I think my, it's not so much the two Hacienda's which is the problem anymore because that has been nerfed, uh, you know, a couple of times over the last few patches. But Marvelous Year is actually ridiculously good. Um, I think I don't think Marvelous Year should increase uh, or decrease the time for villagers that come out of the Hacienda. Like it shouldn't. It shouldn't be associated with the Hacienda whatsoever. Like that is because um, you can have, like you were saying, you know, you can have three TCs. Uh, and Marvelous Year affects all three TCs. You know, it, that's absolutely fine. Um, but to then affect the train time of villagers from the Hacienda's as well is is kind of insane because you can you essentially have five TCs at that point. You know, if you put like 10 villagers on each Hacienda, you know, and you've got the rest of your villagers on food, you're basically f producing uh, villagers from five TCs at that point. Yeah, and it's just it's way too good. It's, it is way too good. So yeah, I don't. I, I think marvelous year should be nerfed so it doesn't. Um, it doesn't impact the hacienda village train time. All right. Yeah. Um, other than that, uh, Spain's kind of like a flex sieve. I think like you can flex with Spain and be like, yeah, like not you don't like. There's a lot of Spain players, but a lot of them are trash. But if you're a good Spain player, like you just know what you're doing. I feel. Um, yeah, that's just like my opinion. Spain's always a scary sieve. Spain's always been like in 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 the hands of a high level player. Like the the fast fortress, like since two thousand and five, you know, since the game came into existence, like the the Spanish fast fortress has always been a scary build, and it, yeah. and it, and you know it works at all levels. Um, oh yeah, you know, so yeah. I mean, there's a reason like you know people can one trick it up to like sixteen hundred elo because it just like it's good. Um, it doesn't work yeah. every time, obviously, but um, I'm interested to see with the pup with the uh, new, what are those musks called? The I forget what they're called, but the new like change to the Piro. That'll be really interesting to see. Um, yeah, we'll see if that's OP, but who knows? Yeah. Brits. Dun, dun, dun. No changes. I think they're fine. <laughs> I think I think they're actually fine, honestly. Like they're a good sieve. They're they can be a challenge to play against, but I think they you know they have their weaknesses and they can be exposed. That's just me. I don't know if you have any. Yeah, I mean, I, I I kind of agree. I mean, the only other thing um, is it's a very uh, hot potato at the moment. The the whole change with the uh, free villagers, um, and I you know I, I I would argue that they can have the free settler card back in age one. Um, and I'd be fine with that. But other than that, I think, yeah, they're fine. Yeah, I mean, people who complain about that, I'm like, okay, look at all the other civs that, you know, like, don't have that. Or it, it, I just never thought it was a big deal, to be honest. And yeah. they still age up with, like, what, 15, 16 vils? Boo yeah, exactly. Like, I, I, congrats, bro. Yeah, Everybody's, yeah. like, trying to get into 14 vil age up, and you're still ahead by two. But, you know. Yeah, whatever. yeah. And they age up quite fast for, you know, considering they have the best age two eco, you know, they, they age up really fast as well. Yeah, um, yeah. Like 20 seconds, you know, two minutes 40 is a really good age up. 
You know, yeah. so yeah, um, yeah, they they are a good sieve. They're a decent sieve. Yeah, and uh, there, there's nothing wrong with like a solid A tier sieve. So that's just me. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Totally agree. Totally agree. Dutch. Mm. Another one. I also <laughs> think the Dutch are okay. I like them. They're fun. They are not OP. They are pretty balanced. I think. Um, I mean, I used to be a Dutch main back in the day. Mm -hmm. Dutch is an interesting one. They have some really bad matchups. Yeah. And yeah. and I think the the problem with the problem with Dutch is as D has gone on, you know, his existence D, like there's more D E stuff, if you will. And and Dutch has kind of just stayed very vanilla. So they kind of get they kind of get outmassed by DLC stuff, you know, D E stuff. And and they struggle with it sometimes. They did recently get um bosniaks relatively recently oh and that i was love a really that big card buff. that card yeah. has won me so many games as the dutch you're oh, just yeah. like getting it's shitted so on good. you just you know train five vet hus mix in some six bosniaks maybe some stratiots and you have the most massive cav switch and you just shit on all of their stuff it's it's, it's, such, it's such a tempo shifting yeah. card like it's game winning card and, and that really helped them but i do think dutch um, could do with a little bit of love. I'm not really sure how, to be quite honest with you, but I, I, you know, they they are worse than you know the other European series, if you will. You know, oh so, yeah, um, yeah. I think they they're really... not as strong as Dutch or Spain. You know, the 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 series like Otto, Spain, Brits. You know, all of these other European series, Germany. They they do beat Dutch. You know, it's it's not by a large margin, but they do beat Dutch. You know, so Dutch could probably do with a little bit more love. Yeah, and I mean, I think a lot of it has to do with, like, you know, Boom versus, like, Turtle Boom, where, like, Brits can just put 100 manners around the fucking map, and, like, they have complete control, and they're eating, like, mines and stuff, and Dutch is, like, just kind of contained. Um, but I also like, like, that challenge where it's, like, you're getting pushed, and you have, like, five skirms, eight pikes, and you're just, like, defending your base with very few units. You're pull tricking your skirms so that, like, with your pikes and stuff, you build a couple of cute walls, you know. Um, I agree that they could do something. I thought the Irish Briggs were, like, an okay addition. I honestly never included them in my deck. I think it's kind of a waste of coin at that point. Mm -hmm. um, but, like, I agree, like, you know, when you have Hausa coming in with, like bullshit like influence raiders and like whatever exactly, Berber yeah. camels like they just, yeah. for free and you know dutch is like i gotta spend 700 resources to get this bank up that's gonna get destroyed exactly, by a couple yeah. of raiders yeah that yeah. i mean it is a problem but i mean i don't know what to do with them it's um, easy to make dutch way too them. good as yeah, well they, yeah they could yeah. easily just become like so broken you know oh yeah yeah um, yeah yeah, yeah. But I, I don't know. I think their their build order is crisp. It's been there for ages. It hasn't really changed. It's just kind of like a staple of the yeah, game as yeah. a hero. Yeah. We could talk about um we could talk about the pup slightly if you wanted to. Yeah, I didn't or see it... any of the uh, Dutch changes. What did what Well did the, the... the main Dutch change is to the uh, Explorer, which can now produce envoys, <laughs> which is kind of a funny one. Um but that that I actually think that's it's not a substantial buff, but it actually is quite a decent buff. Because um, one thing that they struggle with is fast fortress timings, and just having the ability to produce five envoys from your explorer can can give you good flanks, uh, which is you know which is just you know enough timing or enough of a distraction to or enough HP to be able to tank you and, and allow your routers you know to, to do some damage against the uh, the two fat net pushes and all that sort of stuff. So I think um, that that I, I don't think it will change their tier list but i do think it's a nice small little buff which could help in certain situations that they are uh, dutch usually struggle in i agree because you know every time i see spain and i'm queuing as dutch i just shit my pants a little bit and i'm like well i'm kind <laughs> yeah, of oh, yeah. um <laughs> but yeah, I, I, th yeah. I do think that is kind of cool though because um instead of you know idling your tc you're still able to make veils you pop out some just simply to body block so your skirms can like escape or something because uh, mm. I always like building my bases with the Dutch. I make a little, like, a wall to the left, to the right, up and down. And I just make gates yep. for all of them. And just, like, run them around in a circle. Nothing can and ever that's touch good. Yeah, them. that's good. Um, yeah. But, I, like, that'll help even more. So that's that's interesting. Um, but, yeah, we'll see how that, like, plays out. Yeah. Sweden. Um, that's the only thing I have to say. Um, I think the... I, I did see in the later part of your... Uh, 
stream that they nerfed again to like what uh the, the build time um really honestly every time i play sweden i kind of just like obviously scout the entire map and then i just like train a couple of huss and i like kill the vills some like some like pikes or halves around the map that are just like you know sieging while you're fighting um i really don't know how i feel about the 19 what is it 19 seconds now which they already nerfed yeah, the last totally. patch i feel like that's kind of a lot and like i hate sweden, the, yeah but, like that's a I lot mean, it is i think so sweden were um performing too well in across all the elo ranges and you know it, it's it's no secret that their their eco is too good the problem uh, and lever cannons were a bit too good and and you know lever cannons train time now has been increased by like five seconds the uh the top building time is increased by nine uh, up to 19 seconds which is an increase of three seconds which is which is quite substantial um i feel like the, the problem is with sweden right is so sweden are in a weird position where they do really well versus a lot of civ uh, lots of civs but they do really badly against a, a handful of other civilizations and and they've always been stuck in between that rock and a hard place where no matter what changes they make just because of their design of you know very heavy carolean which is a musketeer unit and you know um, no no special kind of cavalry unit or no special skirmisher type unit you know they're they're, they're always going to fit that problem um so you know it's it's, it's difficult one sweden is a difficult one to to um to to manage uh, and to balance because again they're another one like dutch they could very you tweak something very small they're they're very easily broken um so yeah so i honestly don't read this is one of the ones that i don't actually know it's going to be interesting with the with the the pup because it, they have been nerfed they they were nerfed the heaviest out of all of the civilizations so we'll have to wait and see if that's too much of a nerf mm -hmm. but i think i think they're they're gonna be okay to be honest i think they're gonna be okay yeah um something that i think would be interesting so you know in the age two cards the um the Royal Art Bouziers, the Skirms, right? What yeah. if, when you, because you know how, like, you send uh, Jaegers, you send blah, 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 and you're able to train them from your racks? What if, yeah. like, if you're in a really Skirm heavy matchup, you were able to train the Art Bouziers and their cost was changed from food wood to food coin as a trainable unit? Um, yeah, uh, those Art um, uh, units are quite interesting, they're quite unique um i don't think i, I, good, I think that would be quite a cool idea no I, they're yeah. not they're not particularly good but they're the not terrible are good. the promotions are good and they're they're kind of yeah. they have high hit points so i mean i don't know that could be like a, a de yeah i think that could be a cool definitely i think that could be a cool uh change to be honest with you. that sounds like quite a cool change yeah. and then you have like you know your art brusier haka pellet very unique very sweden but like its own mm. kind of gives it another kind of mix versus just spamming shit crossbows in the late game that's that's um, the, the the problem with the hacker pellet is you know it's a specialty unit yet it, it serves it basically serves sweden no purpose because they make carolians yeah. which does exactly the same thing right so that's that's what i'm talking about where they struggle against certain civs because they only have a, a, a very heavy musketeer artillery game and, mm -hmm. and and there's some there's some civilizations that counter that really hard uh, because they have no other unit which is particularly good, you know, hacker pellets are okay, but they do, they're just an expensive Carolean, you know, at the end of the day. So, yeah, that's that's the design of, of, of Sweden, unfortunately. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, they're interesting for sure. Um, and we, you know, changing the hacker pellet is always kind of a, a touchy one, if you will, oh, yeah. based on that that cancerous three months on the ladder <laughs> where I just wanted to uninstall yeah. the game. Holy fuck um yeah that was a uh, interesting one <laughs> yeah malta all right speaking of things that can counter their counters the fucking fixed gun holy shit literally <laughs> what the fuck is that shit reduce the goddamn range it's so because and i hate when people are like oh just like move your culverins back i'm like okay i do that right i shoot first then his you know op plus two percent royal guard culverin plus you know 500 hp comes in shoots mine after i shoot and it's like well there you go you just lost 500 res for nothing um <laughs> or you run into like siege it with like opera next or something oh what's that depot explodes kills you fixed gun still up gets you know revived <laughs> and sh oh just <sighs> yeah <sighs> 
it, it, so, it kills me. It kills me. Yeah. And a, a lot of people complain about the fixed gun. And, uh, yeah, I, I can completely understand why. So, I mean, I, I'm looking at some of the other changes you suggested there. Um, the thing with Malta, right, <clears throat> um, as a civilization, they're not top tier, but they're not bottom tier. Okay, they're, they're, they're pretty good. They're pretty good. Um, but you have to, if you're playing against Malta, you have to play a very specific way because they have some very glaring weaknesses which can be exploited. Mm -hmm. um, and, and when you see it at high level, um, sometimes Malta, Malta either look OP or they look really, really bad. Like, there's no in between with Malta. And, um, you know, it's with fixed guns. Yes, they're good, but you know they're 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 expensive, but they cost population space. Um, there's been some changes with the pup notes to that as well. But uh, they get countered by they get countered by uh, culverins. But the whole point of playing against Malta is you shouldn't you know you can't allow Malta to get into the late game because right. that's then when become fixed guns do become a problem. And I agree, like in the late game, especially then when you've got heavy fortifications. That's when fixed guns become way too good, like way OP. And I, I totally agree. Um, so you're kind of stuck in this place where, yes, they're too OP in the late game. But if you play against Malta like a, a certain way, um, like a rush or a fast fortress timing, they're very weak against that. So, you know, you'll never get to, you, sh you should never get to the late game with Malta. But if you do, then they're too OP. So, yeah, it's, it's, it's a difficult one. It's a difficult one. Yeah. So I'll explain a bit more before I, you know, uh, get on my soapbox. Right. This is also <laughs> like thinking about team games. Right. Because in team games, are you going to win by, you know, putting a hard rush on Malta if they have a teammate that can, you know, produce units? It's a lot harder to, like, take somebody out of the game. In 1v1, literally, I see Malta, I pull out my rush my rush deck, I completely surround them and just, like, poop on them, right? And so, like, like you mentioned, in the early game, I feel like they're so weak because they need to send so many eco cards that destroys their tempo. But once it gets going, and once they're in the late game, they hit H4, you just hit the resign button, you're not going to win most of the time, <laughs> yeah. unless you're better than them by a lot. So I think, like, if you reduce the cost of German Tong, right, you send one less Settler Wagon, um, that could help because, you know, it's a must for Malta to get that. Um, Wignacourt for me, I think is busted because let's think about it, right? You basically turn your villagers into Cour de Bois and then your settler wagons become Cour de Bois settler wagons, right? And <laughs> yeah. when are you not going to be near like an outpost or a town center if you like herd effectively or like play defensively, right? And you're going to play defensively as Malta. Um, so like, I think there needs to be like a, a look at them because the early game sucks and playing as them in the early game is like, I am about to lose or like, you know, you get FF and it's like, how do I deal with two cannons with Expo Pike? Right. But like late game, it's like, you know, you have 500 HP fire throwers with rockets, flamethrower. And like, you know, they just, just delete everything. Um, so it's kind of like, I don't know. It's, it's tough. If you've got to remember, Malta don't have a two Falconet card as well. Right. Uh, so that is something you need to take into consideration. They only have that one um, fixed gun card, and and two he and, and two Falconets is 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 a much better card than than one fixed gun, like oh, without a doubt. Absolutely, like, there's no doubt about it. There's no doubt. So yeah, so fixed guns are a problem in the late game. And and talking about the pup, um, they actually have changed the uh, the hp buff that uh multi get for all their units that was that was included for fixed guns so they've now wait. taken that away it was yeah yeah it's a yeah. fucking building how was that possible? <laughs> I don't know, like, and this is what I'm, exactly and this is what, what i'm talking about why they're so good in the late game because they have that buff so it it, it gets to a point where it feels like colvins don't even counter them anymore so yeah now they've taken that away so Culver, uh, so fixed guns won't feel quite as bad in the late game and they oh. reduce the range by one. Oh, what's the range at now? Do you do you know or the range is 34 well it, it's 35 at the moment but they they're changing it to 34. Oh, so it ma it matches culverins now. Okay, you know what? Yes, yes. That okay, that's that's perfect. That's so okay cuz I was I, I was always wondering like I'd walk in with like four mortars and just be like I'm literally pissing on this building. Like what 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 can you do? But that yeah. okay, that's really good then I think. Um cool, cool. All right. 
<sighs> and yeah. and by the way, the, the the Sentinel suggestion is a hard no from me. <laughs> the the speed one. Yeah, that that'd be terrible if they were sp- at full speed. Okay. Now I know that's the that, that's the kind of normal speed of a of a normal musketeer. But yeah, yeah. Sentinels Sentinels are expensive because of their population space. Right. You you essentially um, add an extra ten wood to it. Um, yeah, yeah. For me, though, right, I, I see the validity in why Corolians and Ashigara Musketeers have higher speed, because they need to get around the map to defend their torps and shrines, right? Why does mm. the Sentinel need it? But what is, what's the base speed for Sentinels? Uh, it's like 4.25, 4.5 or something. Um, I think it might be 4, 4.25, but they get yeah. a speed bonus in, uh, in, in their base, don't they? With, yes, um... yes. So it goes up to like 4. Point, I don't know, something, right? Um, yeah okay okay i i just don't see like why they need it per se yeah it's just de- it's it's like a de- it's like the de power creep um you know because like new units and stuff like are very rarely slow these days do you know what i mean like, that the speed of a, of a unit is is never four anymore do you know what i mean but um yeah i think sentinels if they was if they had a slower speed would would they wouldn't be very good all right. I mean, they would, they would, but I don't know. Maybe, maybe I'm wrong. I, you know, I, I would be happy to concede myself wrong on that point, but um, I don't know. Yeah, I'm, I'm not convinced that they need to reduce the speed. I mean, like I said, Malta aren't, Malta aren't a OP sieve. They're not regarded as like a top five sieve. No, no. So, um, so yeah, I think that would be a, quite a heavy nerf because they would just get, they would, uh, they would basically just get completely. Um, you know, out micro by pretty much every unit in the game. That's true. Yeah. And then it would just turn into an expo pike fest even more. So I guess adding that variety, that's there. It gives them the point to like train them and um, in the early game. They are least. expensive. They are yeah. quite expensive. Yeah. And and they fall off a cliff at the late game. They're actually terrible late game. So um, yeah. Without the rocket card. Yes. Because that, that basically gives them Imperial upgrades in age four and you need that for it. Yeah. Even, even with that though, um, the, the, I mean, we're talking quite late game. You know, you, you want to, you just want to go Expo Pike anyway because that's such a more efficient way yeah. of dealing with your opponent. And because the, the main reason that they fall off a cliff, it's nothing to do with their stats; it's to do with their population space. When you start being able to make two hundred pop worth of stuff, um, having a, a musketeer which is worth two pop um, with kind of oh, not very good stats it you know it becomes a, it becomes they, it becomes a massive problem because they're not like soldados right they're the opposite of soldados soldados are really good late game and, and they're two population space but they are their their stats are insane whilst the whole point of malta is that they're good in the early game but they're bad in the late game uh you know they're they're, they're cost efficient in the early game but they're not in the late game because that's true because of population that's fair that's fair all right. Yeah, no, no, that's fair. Ah, my spaghetti. Um, Where to begin? Um, honestly, so I, I did see some of like the changes to the, what do you call it? The, the resource Lombard cards or whatever. Um, yeah. I mean, Finances, whatever. Yeah. Like I, I saw that and I was like, okay, like, that's literally nothing who cares xp one is good i think that was like valid um but like their biggest thing isn't that their biggest thing is like they'll still get xp because their architects are just you know spamming buildings out the wazoo and they can still spam outposts right i've still played against italy players and i'll walk into their base and i'll just turn around and leave because i'm like i can't do anything um And it's just it's, like the architect just busts the game, right? Like, I don't know what you do with it. Do you make it cost wood? Do you like reduce the number even more? Do you like? It's just kind of like how do you how do you balance that? Um, the brassags, I think they're too fast. The stun is bullshit, and the fact that it does damage is stupid. Um, advanced politicians, it's like okay in age one, what else are you going to send? You're obviously going to keep this for when you need like five falcs, right? In age four or like papal, or whatever. Um, I don't know. Just you, you, you take the wheel, Jesus, take the wheel and guide <laughs> yeah, me to balance so... this fucking sieve. <laughs> it's just, there's a, there's too many problems with Italy. There's too many issues why they're good. So the pup seems to look at resolving most of them, but you're right. So one of them is the architect. Um, and the way I would nerf that again is by only having 
um, one architect per age. So age one having one, age two having two. Currently at the moment, you can have one, then three, then four, then five, instead of one, two, three, four, five. So that's the problem. So basically nerfing one extra, the ability to build one extra architect in age two. Um, the other problems are the Lombards and the XP curvature that you get from them is insane. Uh, when you when you combine that with insane value from Lombard resource cards, the XP trickle is unbelievably insane. So that's one of the biggest issues with Italy is the XP. So that's been nerfed in the pup quite heavily, actually. So there's a, there's now a 0.2 trickle as opposed to a 0.5. So n also the finances card, the Lombard um, Lombard resource cards have also been nerfed quite heavily by about 20%, I think, for each of them. So when you combine those two things now, less resources, less time in Lombards, less xp trickle and less time in the lombard means also less xp trickle it has a compound effect so i'm going to be interested to see how that compound impact you know works and and how much it nerfs italy i think italy might be still quite good probably near the top but the the suggested changes definitely um reduce their their nuttiness in age four and it's not just it's not just the xp lombards the, the resource cards as well it the, the resource cards allowed them to get into the industrial age way too easily and too effectively like there, there was no way to punish it so not only has the xp trickle been nerfed but the the less amount of resources means they won't be able to get to the industrial age quite as quickly so i think what we might see is a lot more italy players playing in fortress age and obviously what does that mean that means that there's no Berseguiles, um in age three so um because that's obviously the 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 other the other issue the fourth point or third point is the Bisegulares and how good they are so um i i i think there might be some changes there's been some changes to the Bisegulares, but not a lot so Bisegulares are still going to be like the best game in the game but if you it, but because of all the other nerfs to italy hopefully it means you know you won't be able to get to age four every game and you won't be able to make as many Bisegulares. And you won't be able to send as many shipments, obviously, because of the XP trickle. So, yeah, I think that compound effect should uh, nerf them quite well. But I, I don't think it will go far enough. But we'll have to wait and see. Yeah, I know, I understand the compound effect. And that's, you know, definitely something to think about. Um, I, I'm still not convinced, though. Like, I, I still think, like, same, same. The, the, the outpost spam and, like, free walls, right? or like whatever you can it, it's just like how I, I i can't tell you the amount of times i've gone into an italy player's base and destroyed literally everything and i walk like into like the like fog of war and they've already rebuilt all of their lombards and tcs and i'm like how is that even you know fair um yeah but yeah we'll we'll see if that brings them more in line from like god tier yeah Oh yeah, oh yeah, big France. Oh boy, <laughs> yeah, France, yeah, boy. All right, I've been playing a lot of France lately. Um, I've been streaming some France, you know, playing it on my own. I love the Civ. I think it's like very balanced. It's really good. Yeah, loses to a yep. lot of like of the DE Civs or like some of the OP Civs, but like it really kind of like you can you can change into anything. You can, you know, do every strategy, albeit not well or like exceptionally. Um, the curs, I think, are like not OP like they were in Legacy. Um, I think they're just like a fun sieve. They have some flavor, like with the Royal Musketeers, the native play. I love doing native strategies with them. Um, the revolutions are fun. They're cool. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, I totally agree. Uh, France are the jack of all trades. And, um, you know, not only would I suggest anyone that's starting new, there might be some new listeners, you know, I would always suggest playing France as your first civilization because they're just, they are just such a good, like, all round civ. Um, and, and just because they're an all rounder doesn't mean that they don't do specific things really, really well because that, you know, they do. Um, and, uh, yeah, they're, they're just, they're, they're a great civ. They are a fun civ. They've got, you know their their specialty is probably their eco. They've got a really strong eco. They've got strong villagers, so it makes it more difficult to raid them and and rush them. Um, yeah, they're just they're a, they're a solid. They're an absolutely solid sieve um, for for every level of play as well. Yeah, 
like there's so many top level players that you know almost every top level player plays france you know they they, they have a fr- they have a french background you know what i mean like that they know how to play that civilization just because you know you need to know how to play the civilization yes yes special special place in uh the the aoe hearts and it's minds. Just a, yeah it's such it's just such a solid sieve like and, and, I, and i agree that they are like the epitome of what balance should be you know they, they are they are in such a they're like i would call them i would put them at the, near the top of a tier but not the very top but you know they're they're just yeah they're a great sieve balance yeah. as well. and, and I, I like what the devs did you know they gave them flavor but it wasn't like ridiculous like yeah. people weren't up in airs like oh the french revolution is op or like oh like the royal musketeers like yeah they're good but like you know the charged attack is i, I would say that's probably like the only thing that's like gimmicky but i mean at the same time like you see the musks walking in you know you can get a vill one shot it just micro your vills better get over it yeah. um yeah. but yeah yeah okay germany um everything is cool except for the shovel gears they're bullshit they are the new haka pellet 2.0 um <laughs> that shit is cancer as fuck literally mono comp shovel gears and you can win games um I literally had like one game where I had all musks and like pikes and goons and they just came in and just pooped on me. And I was like, all right, cool, bro. Like, thanks for playing. I'll see you next time. Um, yeah, that's it. That's all I have to say about it for Germany. Uh, yeah. I mean, Germany, are uh, I, I would put them slightly above France. Um, cause they, you know, they, they've got really good age free shipments, obviously the free Ulans. Um, the, the Prince of well, shovel goes uh I, you're not really seeing that at, at the the high the highest end of play so i don't actually know how op they are without seeing them i think um yeah i mean maybe they're maybe they I, I think they got nerfed in the pup as well um it sounds like they've been nerfed in the pup um so maybe they were too good and i just didn't realize it but i haven't seen much of it at high level play so um i don't think that particularly op but they might be you know, so, yeah i mean um, the biggest thing was like their light cav, right? But their their melee damage was really good. Um, it wasn't like Huss or Ulan level, right? But it was like close to Huss. And they have the speed uh, to yeah. catch goons, and they also have the multiplier against goons. So in goon v goon wars, you like select the front line, they melee them to death, get the snare on the skirms, and then like, yeah, it's just I mean it sounds yeah. like it's a unit that does slightly too well against um its um, similar to the hacker pellet, just without the area effect damage, because that was the reason why hacker pellets were. Because that's what Prince Chevalers are basically, isn't it? Like a hacker, like a hacker pellet, but without the area of effect damage. So I guess they might have been t- slightly too good, and or it, you know, it, it might have involved a lot of heavy degree of micro to beat them um, unfairly, like you know, for for the risk and reward to you know for the unit. So yeah, I I, I probably agree that maybe they need a slight nerf. Yeah, and I think they did. I think they did in the pub. So thank the Jesus wishes, uh, has come true. Um, and that's the thing. Like, you don't see many people use them, but like, I don't. I really think it's like a slept on thing. It's like not as good as the OG like buff Hakapella, but like it was like when you would see it and then then like you just see stables, and I was always like, oh shit! Like I got to make walls and mm. get like skirms, you know. Um, but that's good to know then. It's probably just because war wagons are so good as well. Yeah, because <laughs> also, like, like, why would you get chevs when you have war wagons? Exactly, because like, war wagons are so good. Yeah, exactly, yeah, like, they're exactly. both just so good. Um, I yeah, mean, it, it's yeah. like it's like, what do you want more of, you know? Um, exactly, but, exactly. Yeah, it's, it's whatever. Portugal. Um, I like Portugal. They're fun. Um, I don't know why they reverted dra- uh, Cav combat to only Dragoon combat. Um, I mean, it's not like, you know, you don't need to train Huss. I just think it would be cool if, like, that was a possibility. Um, and I don't know why they removed the sieve uh, bonus of the, f- like, food gathering. Um, I don't know. That's just me. But otherwise, I think they're, like, solid. They're fun. Yeah. yeah. Um, I think I probably agree with the Dragoon combat to Cavalry combat. Like, I didn't like that change. I don't like that at all. Um, and, I, and that's the same lot Because it takes up an extra slot. You have to have an extra card in your deck now um, to be able to have you know hazard combat and the dragoon combat which is you know is actually when you think about it is actually a big nerf because you know every every card counts um so yeah i i agree with that change i'm not sure about the five percent food though i know they got rid of it but like you said portugal are sitting in a pretty good space now they're kind of along the same lines as france you know um 
and they have the free organ gun card which is absolutely insane yeah um yeah as a card it's one of the best cards in the game but overall as a civilization um i think portugal are quite good yeah like you said quite good but not you know not bad not not op but uh pretty good yeah all right awesome the ottomans um oh, yeah here we go i think we can both agree um and if we don't i'm unsubscribing from youtube on following from twitch <laughs> and uh putting you on the shitter list abyss guns are open <laughs> Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. All right. Cool. Cool. All right. All right. All right. Cool. Cool. <laughs> yes. No, but they they literally give me cancer. Why do they have so much damage and multipliers to light cavalry? They bypass range resistance in the skirm wars. Yeah. They are just ridiculous. Like, just reduce their HP, range resistance, and damage. Um. Also, with the Spahi tech at the church, why did they add the Kapakulu tech to give them range? and melee resistance why yeah it's, why? it's, it's so insane it's what? so insane what oh, <laughs> why and then they were like oh we're gonna nerf it by adding an extra few hundred food to the tech but we'll give you another spahi why no you age oh it, it, it was a buff that was a buff yeah, that wasn't enough yeah, that, that, that was a buff <laughs> they, they, they do that and then they're like oh okay cool also um by the way, we're adding more Nizams to the already like broken Nizam strat. Like it wasn't used a lot, but now <laughs> it's meta. You just send the church card and g type GG easy, right click their base, and you can't do anything. Mm. Three, yeah. three great bombards. You ship two great bombards. You get mercantilism. You send back to back. Uh, what do you call it? Uh, cav archers and easy, easy mode. What are you gonna do yeah. about that? Yeah, yeah. It's, it, it's, uh, I don't know where to start with Ottomans because there's just so much that's too good with them. Like, there's so much that needs changing. But, you know, you've got to do baby steps. Like, Abbas guns, yes, they're too, way too good as a skirmisher unit. Like, they, they rip through skirmishers. Like, it's, it's, uh, the only defense people have is the same. Well, it's a two population uh, unit and is expensive. Yeah, but Ottoman don't have to build villages. They get villages for free, you know. So, no, it's not that expensive. And on because, a pop uh, base, it's it's twenty five food, fifty coin. Like, yeah, come, who exactly. are we kidding? They're, they're, they're just way too good. They they beat they beat dragoons way too good. And in the pup, they they have uh, the multiplier versus goons is now two point two five as opposed to as opposed to two point five. I think it should be like one point seven five, honestly. Because goons should be a unit that do well, very well versus Abbas. Because it's it'll be one of the only one of the only units that do well versus them. Um, so that's Abbas gunners. Janissaries are are fine. Um, they've always been a, a, a tanky uh, musketeer unit. Um, the, the other problem, one of the other problems with Ottoman is the ability to to get. Uh, town centers up and just like spam free town centers and and have and have like an insane eco um anyone who who played uh who did who didn't play before uh de ottoman was always the civilization which rushes and is very aggressive and oh, yeah. doesn't have very good eco and but in de that changed so their units stayed the same but they can also now boom really well as well so um you know the the, the amount of the amount of people out there that li literally are like in top 50 and they're literally just like free ha they've got three tcs in fortress age by like six and a half minutes and then they can just sh spam like age three uh age three units is is insane so it's really it's really too it's far too difficult to punish that and and that has been slightly addressed in the pup um but not really so i think that's still gonna be the game um and the other thing yes is the the fortress um age text the, the the um not the church i, I keep the mosque, that, I the mosque the mosque yeah that's it so from the mosque um the like you said the advanced mosque card uh they're, they're, it's way too good it is like the spahi ones the spahi one and the bombard one should cost gold not food um and that would that would probably still be too good um, the fact that they cost food is just insane because again, don't forget that Ottomans don't need, they don't need food for villagers. So they can just put all of their villagers on food and they will have 2k food in no time. And you can just spam the, the, all of those, um, texts from the mosque. So yeah, it's, it's, it's way too good. I, the Nizam's not so much because it's wood. Um, 
I think you need to change the mosque. Uh, you know the one that makes them cheaper? You need to change that. that that's way too good. Yeah, I mean... Uh, you could probably just get rid of that as well. You could actually probably just get rid of that card. Um, so they have to cost their original amount. Uh, and that would, that would I think, be a good, a good nerf. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's so... And, like, honestly, I... I try to like not play like the super broken sieves unless I'm like very tilted and lost like a bullshit game. Um, mm. And so th this happened one time, like I was like playing like uh, and I, I got shitted on by an auto and I was like, fine, you want to come play this game, queue right back <laughs> up, right? And split firing with abyss guns is just like you get two abyss guns, one shotted, one shotted. Like if you have like high APM for that and you can just do two two one shot two one shot two one shot just op op yeah um yeah cav archers they used to be kind of shitty right like they used to just be tanky or whatever but now they're like good with the you know the different flight archery and stuff like <laughs> yeah i don't know what it is about cavalry archers but all of a sudden because back in the day it was they always you would always go dragoons and no one would ever ever make cavalry archers like, very rarely would anyone ever make cavalry archers and now all of a sudden it seems like it's the complete opposite way around and everyone makes cavalry archers and no one makes dragoons it's kind of insane um they are just very very tanky and uh yeah they're very they're very good they're very good yeah yeah and they have like 30 percent but, 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 melee resistance too so like if you crash hussin yeah. right you can just drag box them to the front where like Normally, it would be like, okay, I have to consider: do I trade my Avis or do I keep the more expensive units? And like, it, it just throws that out the window with the micro, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So lots of changes to what is needed, I think. Absolutely, absolutely. Russia, um, the Boyars nerf. I didn't really understand that. Um, I don't think Russia. Mm. So a lot of people say Russia's bad. I say I don't think you know how to play Russia. Like they are a decent sieve, they they definitely have their weak matchups, right? Um, I thought Boyars yeah. was always like a good value card and kind of essential for their play in extended age two, because a lot of times like they'll just continue to be in age two while other sieves will like age up and get try and get Falks or like you know better Cav or whatever. Um, the Savnia card, I liked that. It was kind of OP for a bit, but I think like finding a middle ground and increasing that would be not warranted but i think it would be nice honestly and then um if ottomans get flight archery so should russia that's all um that's interesting that the flight archery i didn't i've never really thought about that but that'd be interesting to give that to russia and I, yeah i mean i couldn't see that being too good uh that would probably be quite cool but yeah there's there's all, all i can say right about russia is the pup and wait till your viewers that are watching this to go and read the pup if you haven't already like the changes to russia are the most significant out of any civilization uh that's really? been changed yeah like, the, the the amount of new units that they have and and units that they can now make in h2 like they can make halberdiers in h2 wait wait wait, wait 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 cavalry archers in h2 wait yeah. wait 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 whoa 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 whoa, whoa. Whoa, They've whoa. got a new grenadier card, you know, that gives them an art, uh, an artillery foundry and like two grenadiers or something like that. Um, yeah, like in H two. What? <laughs> yeah, yeah. What? Uh, there's been a lot of changes to Russia, so like, it, it's just like impossible for me to like tell you everything about it. Just, just go and read the pop notes if you guys are watching out there. Like, honestly, like, hunger. <laughs> like, Wait. yeah, Russia's gonna be a different beast altogether now. That's crazy. So you could honestly just do like a Russian how brush, like Piroshiki yeah, yeah. Russia, you know, <laughs> like you just spam out for <laughs> years and just have them yeah. run in and die. That's okay. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I can't see them. The thing. Like if against yeah. Russia, right? If I'm like, you know, some sieve, I'm like, okay, shift click, shift click, shift click, huss, just run in, delete everything. Oh, yeah. Ruskets, I don't yeah. care. Right click. But now if you yeah. have like halves in there, that's kind of scary. Exactly. And that's the point um it gives them you know viable options now and I, I, it's kind of like it's it's kind of promoting russia to stay age two which has kind of been russia's thing anyway um but but now going up into ages doesn't really offer russia too much other than like the two falconet card really um and obviously veterancy for units so now they they basically can get every type of unit in age two which is kind of cool i i can't really see anything being broken i don't think but uh, it's definitely like Russia's going to be a wild sieve now. Like there's going to be there's going to be so many options for for Russia and H. It, it's going to be crazy. It's going to be crazy, honestly. And you thought they were good at rushing before? Oh man, they are. They're on a whole other level now for rushing. So yeah. oh. watch this space. 
Oh boy. Uh, <laughs> I, I I actually am kind of I'm really surprised about that. I I don't know how I feel. I'll have to read that later and uh, yeah, weigh that. But that's crazy. All right, USA. Um, I think actually, I know you say like all the time like. Oh, USA is so bad. Like they're poop. <laughs> like blah blah blah. I'm like, okay, yeah, fair. Like I've played them here and there, and I'm like, okay, I just don't know any good builds. But I think like ever since, so I'm a I'm a I'm a skirm goon kind of guy, right? Like that's my yeah, that's my yeah. bread and butter. Um, and I I really like the carbine cavalry. They feel really good with some sharpshooters. Like you get extra oh, yeah. range on the sharpshooters. Your carbine cavalry fire faster than other goons. Um, like it just feels clean. Um, I would say that, like, I know, like, a lot of people like to do the, uh, like, saloon strats. Um, I think the Owl Hoot and Cowboy Pop, if you reduce that, it makes it more viable. Because it's kind of, like, meme and then it, like, it runs out of steam. Um, mm. Increase the villager count back. I don't know why it's, like, what, like... Yeah, I completely agree with that. I don't understand that. It doesn't make sense to It's me. a treaty change. It's a treaty thing, that's why. Ugh. Anybody who's watching well, exactly. tree, just like unsubscribe. Yeah. I, I, I don't care. Like, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's because like they get so many trickles and stuff. Like in Supremacy, it doesn't make any difference because you can't get all the trickles in, in, in Supremacy because right. you don't have all the cards. But um, in Treaty, if you, obviously people will. And so if they have 99 bills, they say that the, the eco is too good. So it's a Treaty problem. But obviously that's that's not good for Supremacy players. So I totally agree with that change. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I think the three uh, CDBs, if you make it 200 wood, fair. Valid. Um, so I... I've actually changed my tune on USA. I actually think USA are okay. Um, I don't think they're terrible at the moment. And and that the main reason I've changed my tune is because they they actually changed last patch um, before the pup. They changed um, the free C uh, CDB card to two hundred twenty five wood, mm -hmm. which was down from two hundred fifty wood. Yeah. And they changed the Dutch bank, I believe, by fifty coin. So they they reduced that by fifty coin, I believe. I think it's three hundred coin now instead of three hundred fifty. And 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 those two changes actually feel like they've made a big difference. Yeah. So you know you can age up, you know, consistently at a good time now with with uh, with USA just because of that twenty five wood chopping wood time. You know, makes a big difference. So. Um, you know, I, I'm. I think USA are are okay at the moment. You know, I don't think they're anywhere near the top, but I don't think they're at the bottom at either. So I think USA are okay at the moment. Um, they've got a lot of meme stuff, a lot of meme strats. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, but uh, they they you know they can have good eco if you tech into it. But again, like I was saying with Malta, they have a lot of. Um, if you decide to do that, they have a lot of um, weaknesses that you can exploit. So um, if you know how to exploit USA's weaknesses, then yeah. You, you know, you can have an easy time versus them sometimes. Yeah. Okay, this is page one. This is page Ooh, two. Oh, blimey. Oh, yeah. Okay, now look. Um, a year after Mexico came out and they nerfed the FI, I got the DLC. And I was like, <laughs> there's no way it's this easy, right? Go in eight minutes and I'm like <laughs> age four and I'm laughing my ass off sending like nine soldados, Falconet, Chinacos, which are just ridiculous, you know, and like just going into their base, blowing shit up. It's just like you, you get Falconets and the, the thing that like this is mostly for team games, right? In 1v1, I don't mind playing Mexico. I really don't. In team games, there's some like strats where you just sling your uh, your teammate resources and they just pump out falcs and like you know five minutes in the game there's like a falconet in your base and you're like what the fuck do i do mm -hmm. um and then they just spam insurgents and it's crazy it's crazy if you sling um so that's like something that i've seen a lot actually and it's kind of annoying because you can't really do anything about it um the california revolt like the 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 free what do you call it like the villagers that pop out of like you know because some revolts, it's like, it's all in. But I feel like with Mexico, you can revolt, and it's like, I get more units, and my eco is still good. I get a third factory, you know, like, all that other stuff. Um, mm. There's a, there's a lot where I just feel like, it, I mean, it's so convoluted, right? That it's oftentimes, if you don't, if you haven't played the Civ for a long time, you're not going to know what's coming. They change decks so frequently throughout the game, you forget what cards they have. Um, and I mean, I think that's just like a game sense awareness issue for me personally, but it is like, it's just hard to deal with. Um, but other than that, I think like in 1v1, they're, they're, they're okay. I don't mind playing them. A lot of people try the Baja and they just fail miserably. Um, 
Yeah. Like me max. Uh, I mean, I... yeah. I mean, I can't really comment on Team too much because I don't play enough of it to understand the meta that well. Um, I, I do play high level team games because obviously the people I play with are you know very good team players. But I, I'm not. I'm not like in the meta of team games. But in one v one, um, yeah. I mean, Mexico are, are like the most versatile civ, right? Like they, they they can do everything. Like they they're more versatile than France. You know, they're they're basically like France on steroids and and. They're just nutty. They're very nutty. Um, you, yeah, I, I, I think they are slightly too good, Mexico. I think they're slightly too good. I think they're at the top of A tier. And uh, the pup um, did nerf Mexico quite, you know, one of, I think they're probably like the second or third heaviest uh, nerfed sieve in the pup, I would say. Um, I think the insurgent rush is the biggest problem. It's too good for how easy it is. Um, you know, you literally just make two houses and age up and then you put everyone on food and literally just spam insurgents. And it's actually really good. Um, I've been beaten by it, you know, uh, at, at 1900 level ELO, you know, um, so it does work at, uh, t too good. Um, so the insurgents have uh, food costs has gone up by plus five, which I think is a really good change. And, and that's what I would have suggested, even even if the pup didn't say that. I, I think insurgents needed a, a, um, a cost increase. Uh, on top of that. Um... Yeah, maybe get rid of the five villager card. Maybe they don't need the five villager card. Just give them a four villager card. Uh, they have that as well. So, um, and I think that would nerf them quite hard um, as well. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I think between those two things, insurgent, uh, insurgent increase in cost and like get rid of the five villager card, uh, that that would actually nerf them quite heavy. Um, to be honest with you. So, um, yeah, I think if you did those two things, they'd be okay. They'd be that would be a sufficient nerf. Sure. And um, I think the other thing, I think the Chinako, since it has a multiplier against, like, it's a Lancer, right? But it has multipliers yeah. against all Cav. I, like, and then you get yeah, the Liberty it's, March. It's a small multiplier, isn't it? Yeah, it's just, like, it, it, like, the thing with Lancers, right, as we've noted with, like, other civs, they lose to other Cav. But with that, it's, like, do they? <laughs> like, do they lose yeah. to other Cav? I think, um, I, when... When Tinicos came out, because I remember, like, they're not... So they do have a multiplier, but it's, like, 1.3 or something, isn't it? So they actually... I think they still lose to, like, heavy cav, like, Hazars and, and other heavy cavalry units. But they... The whole point of them... The whole point is that, yes, they have... They're basically... They're, they're a soft Lancer as well, aren't they? Because they're not as good as a, an actual Lancer versus right. infantry. But they're... I don't know. It's difficult to explain. They're, like... What's the Japanese Naginata? They're kind of like a Naginata um unit but they but they're supposed to hold their own i think was the exact words that would devs you would use they're supposed to hold their own versus heavy cavalry as well so i can see i you know maybe maybe nerf the multiplier by a smidge but like um, buff so the they, infantry you know or something like a compensate compensatory no, they don't have to buff that but it, but but maybe just like nerf the multiplier by like 0.1 so instead of point uh, 1.3 it goes to like 1.2 you know, That's maybe fair. or one point one. Yeah, you know, something like that. I think uh, would be good because otherwise they would get absolutely dicked on by you know other cavalry units. So, all right. Oh, the last thing. Um, the the cards where it's like for each shipment of the game you get plus two plus you know blah blah blah. Um, oh, yeah. Like, uh, so this this happened to me in a game once where I like. It was really late game, like it was a good stalemate. He revolts, and then he sends like a like I like look in his base, like I'm in his base. All of his villagers like turn into I don't know, like some ridiculous like really weird unit. And then he sends a card, and like all of a sudden, like a hundred villagers pop. And I was like, what, what the fuck? Like how? Wh wh what? And I checked his <laughs> deck, and it was like the dude had like eighty villagers. I was like, like I looked at the timeline. It was like like 80 zero and then like a minute later it was back up to 80 and i was like that's absolutely obscene like how is that possible why is that a thing <laughs> yeah no it's uh yeah it's it's it's, it's good <laughs> <laughs> it's just stupid like cap cap it at something where it can't just you know late game it's like all right i'm gonna revolt and then unrevolt essentially um i don't know yeah yeah yeah, no, I mean, I mean, yeah, it's 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 too good. All right. Now, uh, that's all of the sieves. Linehart, thank you mm -hmm. for taking time and uh, speaking about you know your perspective on these things. Um, and uh, you are very welcome. Yeah, and uh, I'm looking forward to the next pup um, and seeing 
very happy to see some of my uh my changes you know get sprinkled in there before this yeah, was even yeah, released yeah. but uh do a do a do a uh, video on it you know um i should be dropping one tomorrow hopefully but uh yeah um drop a video and uh yeah i think this 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 has come at a good time because there was a there was a comment that got a few likes on one of my videos saying i should do more collabs with people so um oh. here's my first collab so <laughs> all right thank you very much yeah 